Hey, sports fans. Are you in the market for Florida sports or just keeping up with the latest in the panhandle? Palm Tree Sports is a dedicated audio hub to all things sports in the Sunshine State. We cover current events, big news, heavily favored opinions all across the NFL, NBA, MLB, and so much more. So come check us out every Saturday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a down south education on Florida sports and athletics. It's hosted by yours truly, Corey Pujols, and it's powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another installment of Palm Tree Sports Radio. My name is Corey Pujols, your host, and as always, this is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Happy Saturday, guys. I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. Um... Forgive me if I sound a little tired, but I am here and I've got some, some information for you guys and we're going to jump right on into it. Right. So, you know, and I'll, I urge you guys immediately now, you know, due to the, you know, the way things have ended for uh, the Dolphins and obviously the fact that the Jaguars were not able to make the playoffs. We will not be focusing on them today. We're going to focus on the one team that is in the playoffs as those other two teams have a lot of things to work through. I will touch on a few things, but just a heads up there, just in case anybody was expecting, you know, a little bit more. Just want to throw that out there, guys. But in any case, as I mentioned before, we're going to focus on the team that is still in the playoffs, the surprise team of the three teams here in Florida. For those of you who were not inclined to the way things were looking at the start of the season, for the state of Florida in regards to the NFL, the Miami Dolphins had the pound-for-pound best roster in the state. You look at the roster from top to bottom, you see talent at every position, and they look like they were going to be able to make a deep dive into this year's playoffs. Unfortunately, that was cut short last week by a loss to the Bills, and, you know, it was about what you would expect, in all honesty. When it when it came down to that game, I didn't expect the Bills to run away with the game, the game, but I did expect them to stay on top. They came in, they were on fire. I think they had won like five of their last six or won their last six games. I can't remember exactly what it is. Uh, you know, my boss is a a, a a Buffalo Bills fan, so we had a great little powwow about that. You know, Josh Allen and, and all those boys up there in Buffalo. So congratula- congratulations to the Buffalo Bills for being successful in the playoffs. But unfortunately for Miami, that ends their road, and it, it sends them back to the area of questioning. When you have a roster that was built to succeed as much as that roster was, especially at every level of the game. And you come up short to a division opponent, there's a lot of questions you start asking. I'm pretty sure one of those questions that they're asking is two of the answer at quarterback. Well, I'll tell you who's not asking that question right now. That'd be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. After a surprise victory, and I say surprise because I saw it coming, but not everybody else saw it coming. There were a ton of people who picked the Eagles to win this game and thought that the defending NFC champion and NFC representing in the Super Bowl team, uh, Philadelphia Eagles, would take this game by virtue of how much talent they had and the differenti- the differential between the quarterback position skill-wise. But this is what happens when you don't pay attention, guys. I think a lot of people were so busy looking at what they saw on paper instead of utilizing the experience that they have had watching the game of football, which is what I used to make my score prediction of the game. For those of you who saw, a lot of people were picking the Eagles 27-20 or like 27-21. I saw the Eagles scoring a lot of 27s on people's scorecards uh, when I saw people picking the games. I said last week that the score of the game would be a 31-17 to or 31-20 to victory, depending on how well our defense played and I apologize Buccaneers defense I definitely did not put enough respect on you guys' name on my team's name as I should have as the Buccaneers were able to route the Eagles 32 to 9 now contrary to what the score says there was a touchdown by the Eagles but we're not going to pay attention to that we're going to pay attention to what Tampa Bay did as to the fact that that is going to be what carries Tampa Bay in this game against the Lions so here's the thing Much like last week, uh, most people are not giving the Buccaneers a chance to win the game. And that's okay, because it's been that way. If you guys remember uh, our second Super Bowl appearance against the Chiefs a few years back, everybody picked the Chiefs. I think I saw about 52 people pick. Out of the 52 people that picked, 49 of them picked the Chiefs. Okay, and of the three people who picked Tampa Bay, one was Peter Schrager Schrager from Good Morning Football. There was... um, one 
per there was somebody on ESPN who picked Tampa Bay. I can't remember exactly who it was, but there was one person from ESPN, and then I believe there was one more media presence. I don't want to say it was Colin Coward. I don't think it was him, but it was somebody on that level who chose Tampa Bay. The reason why I'm bringing this information to you is because Tampa Bay plays best when we're underdogs. Yes, obviously our record isn't the best reflecting record. Yes, we have a bunch of new pieces as well as a bunch of veteran pieces, some of which that are not quote-unquote happy. Uh, as some people might use the terminology. I disagree. I think it starts at the top. I think our general manager, Jason White, is absolutely phenomenal. I think he's the reason why this team has had the cohesiveness it has had. Uh, we talk about you know, re uh, representation and responsibility in the league of football when it comes to the owners and the head coaches. And I think this is a guy who got to Tampa Bay and took it with some conviction. You look at his first overall pick, it was Mike Evans. We're staring at Mike Evans 10, 11 years later, and we're saying, wow, is that not perhaps the best drafted uh, player in Buccaneer history? Okay. This is what I mean. That success has followed us uh, since Jason has found his way here. Yeah, it was kind of bumpy, you know, a decade ago. But hey, that's okay. You know, and, and the reason why that's okay is because anything that's worth it takes time. We've won a Super Bowl under Jason Light. We've been able to call on some amazing football players to come play in here at Tampa Bay. Uh, you know, um, Tom Brady, Gronkowski, Leonard Fournette, uh, Antonio Brown, for all intents and purposes, everybody. Okay. Uh, just focusing on, you know, his stats, what he does on the field. Let's not talk about what he does off the field. Um, you get what I'm saying, though. Like, Jason White has been phenomenal, and I think that it's showing itself here in our fourth run here in the playoffs in, uh, in the last few years, you know. And it's something I hope follows us more, you know. And I think that it will. As long as he's here, as long as we can keep a good cohesive unit and, do, and continue to do it through the draft, such as, you know, the Ravens. And some of these other teams that have found a lot of success, the Packers through the draft, uh, the Lions, of course, have found a ton of success through the draft. So we just have to continue to do that to be successful. Speaking of the Lions and the draft, this game is going to be a really good one, guys. Uh, like I said, I, a lot of people aren't giving Tampa Bay the time of day, and that's fine. You know, we play best as underdogs, and th there are a few routes to victory here. First things first, let's talk about what happened in the original meeting earlier this season. First things first, the Bucks were not healthy during that meeting, okay? Now, neither were the Lions. Neither team was at 100%. However, the Lions did have more pieces. That's the first thing. Secondly, I don't think anybody was counting on the success of um, Amon Ross St. Brown. I think that a lot of people earlier in the season were looking at him and saying, okay, another decent wide receiver that's going to be here for two or three years and then disappear again or, you know, uh, uh, just disappear due to injury or, you know, nobody really knew what to expect from Amon Ross St. Brown. And I think this year has been a great coming out party. Unfortunately for him, I think it's time we shut it down. What do you think, guys? I think it's time for that Tampa Bay, Tampa 2 to really assert themselves. Now, here's the thing. Somebody who wasn't to be found last week, even though I said he would have an amazing game, was Antoine Winfield Jr. I think that he will make his presence felt here against the Lions. I think this is the game that he perhaps has been waiting for. When you look at the game that was played earlier this season, this was definitely one of the worst games played by not just the Buccaneers offense, but the secondary. Amon Ross St. Brown had over 100 yards receiving. Um, you know, the, the Jared Goff lightly took off against Tampa Bay, and for the record, uh, Jared Goff's record against Tampa Bay is like 3-1 and one or something like that. It's absolutely atrocious, like, for Tampa Bay. So, I look forward to seeing the Buccaneers take all of these things that they struggled with in past meetings with this team and this quarterback and utilize it to their advantage. One of the things that we know we will have to our advantage is the edge of the defensive line, right? I fully expect Tampa Bay to be in the backfield and live back there, okay? I fully expect this. Tampa Bay was able to develop a lot, a lot of defensive chemistry as well as defensive momentum and offensive momentum against the Eagles. And if you can't do it against that team, I can't help you. This game's going to be a lot closer than what people, you know, think. I'm not 100% sure if I can give a uh, a score, you know, but I, I'll give me a second. I'm going to think of one, but there's there's something else to talk about. The Lions offense and defensively have been very sound, right? You look at this game that they played against the Rams last week. Now, the Rams definitely showed some wrinkles in the Lions secondary, which is something, one, that I believe that we'll be able to take advantage of. Two, having the receiving core that we do should be light work. However, there's just one problem. The Buccaneers offensive line struggled last week against the Eagles, and Baker Mayfield got hit a couple of times in, in ways that I don't want to see my starting quarterback get hit. If Tampa Bay is going to be successful on offense, the first thing they're going to have to do is hold that line, 
okay shout out to Toto if you guys know then you know hold the line all right wonderful song by the way that's what the offensive line is going to have to do it's very simple if the Buccaneers limit the Lions to I'm going to say three or less sacks Tampa Bay wins this game okay if they cannot, if that defensive line for the Lions gets going in any shape, way, form, or fashion, Tampa Bay will be in for a dogfight that can go either way. This game is going to come down to which offense, which quarterback specifically can make better decisions with the football, and which defense can take away the football from the other team. Now, this is a good area to live in, as Tampa Bay has done a wonderful job taking the ball away, and we are in the plus when it comes to turnovers. However... The lines are not to be slept on. A 13-5 record says that they played really good football. And not only really good football, but they won their division this year. All right? First playoff game in 30 years. Congratulations to the Lions. You guys deserve it. But you also deserve to lose on Sunday. Okay? Because I believe in my Tampa Bay Buccaneers with my full heart, my whole soul, everything about me and everything within me tells me that we have a wonderful chance to win this game if we just check a couple of small boxes, guys. So that's my belief there in that aspect and what to expect for the game. The Buccaneers arriving with this 10-8 record, which is looking a lot better than it did to end the season. Add that one win, that playoff win against the Eagles, which was an avengeful uh, avengeful win, if you will, due due to the fact that we lost to the Eagles earlier this season, 25-11. So this would make it our second game straight in the playoffs that we play, an NFC team that we lost to during the regular season. Should the 49ers beat the Packers and the Buccaneers beat the Lions, that will be 3-for-3 against teams that we... We have lost two against in the regular season, all of which were close games. All right. Now, it's no coinky dink that this be the case. The Buccaneers on a revenge tour, Baker Mayfield on a revenge tour. Speaking of Baker, that's somebody that we need to give some credit to. You guys put your hands together for one Baker Mayfield who's been in the kitchen recently. When I mean in the kitchen, I mean by the tote of 337 yards, three touchdowns. No interceptions. Passing the ball off to nine different receivers last week against the Eagles. Really showing how easy it is to get done. Not only that, but he also showed how much of a general manager he is on the field with the football in his hand. He didn't take uh, too many bad plays. A couple of sacks, of course. Some things you just can't do. You can't really do anything about those sacks, especially when you look at you know how decent the Eagles' defensive line is. Odds are that's the best part of that defense in all honesty. So I'm glad we were able to bear the brunt of that. But, you know, I, I'm not going to... You know, I'm not going to lay anything down and and put anything in the sand or in, you know, you get what I'm saying. Like, I'm not going to bet on anything at this moment. This game can go either way. These are two great teams in the NFC right now. Both teams won their division, respectively. And anything can happen, guys. Anything can happen. Speaking of anything happening, I would love to see Jared Goff throw three interceptions and add a fumble to that. That's my bold take for the game. Buccaneers turn the ball over four times, hopefully. Well, they will need to if they want to win this game. The way to do it is relatively easy, though. Amon Ross St. Brown has been the go-to piece for Jared Goff. Of course, if you can isolate this guy or at least appear to make him in double coverage for the regular part of the game, he should be less than average during this game. Uh, When you have a glass cannon offense like the Lions have, you take away their one and two, and after that, things usually start to crumble. We're seeing that happen right now with Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. For those of you who are watching that game, what a good game right now. 10-10, start of the second half. Can't wait to see what happens here. But this is what I don't want for Tampa Bay to do, is to end up in a slugfest like this with the Lions. Should they do that, obviously the Lions have the roster to make it happen to win games. 13 of them they did in the regular season and one so far here in the playoffs. So Tampa Bay, we got to do what we do best. Stop the run, take away the number one receiver and get pressure on Jared Goff. We do those three things, we'll force turnovers, we'll win this game. Antoine Winfield recorded interception. Uh, Devin White should be in the backfield and live in the backfield, especially with his speed. He should be the fastest person in the front seven on both sides of the ball. So I can't wait to see how he hops off the ball. Our defensive line is going to have to be phenomenal, which it was last week. Kalijah Kansi, Yaya Diaby, just two guys that are just rookies, you know, just some rookies that just happen to be playing like all pros at the moment. Kalijah Kansi, the highest graded defensive lineman last week throughout the playoffs. And uh, this is this is essentially what Tampa Bay wants to do defensively, right? Now, obviously, we didn't create any turnovers last week, but still holding a team such as the Eagles to only nine points, one touchdown, one field goal is something that I relish in. And I believe that if we could do it against the Eagles and Devontae Smith, we should be able to do it against the Lions. Again, we will see what happens. There's no guarantee that, you know, a- any of these things will take place. But I'm just speaking on patterns that we've seen in football over the last few years, and especially with these two teams. Defensively, well, the Lions have a great they have a great defense, guys. 
All right, Aiden Hutchinson, he's been a monster. He's recorded at least two sacks each of the last three games. Um, tackles for loss as well. He's been very stout. But he likes to line up a lot on the outside. I think this is a situation where if I was Tampa Bay, I would tell Baker, listen, you see Alex do that dumb crap, all right? Or my bad, not Alex, but uh, Aiden, do that dumb crap. Take advantage of it. Look at that side of the field. Isolate the linebacker. Short passes. Let the receivers do the rest. If he overshoots it, take off, Baker. Just take off. I would not be surprised to see Baker have over 50 or 60 yards rushing in this game due to that nature alone. And his feet may be the difference in this game. He is more athletic than Jared Goff. So, and faster. So, I would love to see uh, Baker get out of the pocket, scramble a little bit, and uh, take advantage of his feet right now. This is something that he can do and that we will be successful if we do it. Dad, you make a great point. We got to stop Alex Anzalini, who is a Gator. Shout out to the boys. Uh, and Aiden Hutchison, of course. Yep, we are, we're 100% going to have to do that. It's not the only Gator that's over there, but this Gator has lost his discipline since he left the Gators. And that would be C.J. Gardner-Johnson. C.J. Gardner-Johnson played three years for the University of Florida. He was absolutely phenomenal for us there in college. He, uh, he was able to seal away the win against against your now uh, NCAA national champion Michigan uh, <clears throat> Wolverines. This was the last time that he actually took the field. He played a phenomenal game during that game, but unfortunately he's lost his discipline, and he's run his mouth about a talented bunch of receivers with Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, David Moore, uh, Trey Palmer, I mean, uh, 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 Devin Tompkins. Like, did you guys not see any of these guys pop off last week? Uh, Rashad White as well out of the backfield quietly the best receiving uh, running back in the uh, out of the backfield this year for those of you who were following that information so it's quite possible that cj may have lit another fire underneath tampa bay it wouldn't be the first time he's done it he did it when he was with the saints guys so yeah uh gonna be a great game i really hope i gave you guys a bunch of information to look out for a, good, a great synopsis i'm gonna give you guys a score prediction i don't like the idea of tampa bay winning a close ball game this game is most likely going to be a close ball game. I think the Buccaneers take this game 28 to 23. I don't say this with a lot of conviction. I say it with the possibility and knowledge of what this team is capable of doing and hoping that they see the same things I see. Todd Bowles is a defensive minded coach. That should win us the game. However, there's no guarantee. So, Bucks, O line, D line, you guys will make or break this game. The rest of the boys will do essentially what you guys do and if that's if you find success in the trenches so will we running the football and passing the football if we do not find such su su uh, success in the trenches obviously the lines will control time of possession and our defense will get tired which is what it's been susceptible to earlier this season and in the past and it's also how we lost to the lines earlier this season offense couldn't stay on the field so that's that's the recipe for success baker has to stay on the field he's got to stay healthy he's got to stay upright if he can do that if our o-line can limit these sacks to three or less we have a great chance to win this ball game. So that's that, guys. That's that's what to expect for the game against the the, the Lions. Uh, obviously, the winner of this game is going to go on to play the winner of the game later tonight, which is going to be the 49ers and the Packers. This might be the best game of the entire playoffs that we've had so far. I look forward to seeing it. I can't wait to determine uh, who Tampa Bay is going to play. Fingers crossed, of course. I, like I said, you guys know I believe in my Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We love them down here. But winner of that game, like I said, should it be the 49ers, would be a rematch of the game that excuse me, that the Buccaneers lost to the 49ers earlier this season. Out of all the teams in the playoffs in the NFC, the one team that the Buccaneers did beat is the Packers. Very, very impressive, uh, you know, game that was played there. Now, uh, let's check a couple of things as Lamar gallops into the end zone for his second touchdown of the game. Good job, Lamar. Good job, MVP. Lamar Jackson putting the, the Ravens on his back right now. 16-10 ball game, about to kick the extra point. Good job, Lamar. So, Ralph, my man, I think the Lions prevail 27-21. It's a safe pick. That's a great number. That's what a, the number that I've seen a lot. But that was also the same number that I saw a lot of people say that the Eagles would put up. A lot of people were saying that the Eagles would win 27-20 to or 27-21. That was the score that I saw the most. Um, that's Like I said, that's a safe pick. That's a great pick. Here's the thing. The Buccaneers' defense has low-key been phenomenal this year. Okay, holding most teams that score above 30 points to under 30 points. And realistically, the only shootout that we got into was the one against Houston earlier this season, which that was a high scoring ball game. But that was also when we were least healthy. I believe we were missing two cornerbacks. Saying we had one and then he got injured in the game. And then we were out. Devin White was not healthy for that game. Uh, we had a 
two defensive linemen that were not healthy for that game. So it was one of those things where CJ Stroud was able to take advantage of that, and it was still a close ball game. The Bucks could have pulled out late. Unfortunately, we just didn't have enough magic in the repertoire to do so. So that's going to be very interesting to see. But that is a great that is a great score for the ball game. I'd love I'd love for you to switch those two numbers though. That's just my opinion. Jen B, thank you so much. Have a great show. We will always, and I really appreciate it, you guys. You guys are the best. Same thing back to you, Ralph. You know, uh, I, you know, I really appreciate you guys jumping in and interacting with the show. But like I said before, guys, that's what I have for the NFL. I would definitely want to spend a little bit more time, give you guys a deeper dive to see what it looks like from a Tampa Bay perspective, especially since this game, again, was played earlier this season. And like you said, Dad, go Pack, go. Down here in the South, uh, in Tampa Bay, guys, we, we kind of have a, a, a huge respect for the Packers. You guys know know that in different cities teams don't like other teams right like you know that there are some teams that are respected and some teams that are just hated in tampa bay some of the teams that are hated are the eagles all right due to the nature of their history early on the eagles would take advantage and have their way with tampa bay until tampa bay started pushing them back the packers and the bucks always had a healthy rivalry go back and look at warren Sapp and brett Favre duke it out how many times they've done that in the late 90s and early 2000s let me tell you those are some of the greatest football games i've ever watched was the the Packers versus the Buccaneers, and trust me, if you haven't seen any of it, go look at those games. There are three phenomenal games between the year of 1998 to 2002, guys. Three phenomenal games right there. Um, so that's an example of what I mean when I say hate and then the respect factor, right? So, But like I said, uh, vanquishing the Eagles last week was a phenomenal uh, boost to us, and uh, I think we're going to ride that here into the Lions' den for all intents and purposes. Guys, let's go ahead and take our first break of the evening. When we get back, we'll talk about what's going on in the uh, NBA, the NHL. I got some college basketball information for you, and then I'll talk to you a little about Sean Strickland versus Drake is Duplessis, especially if you have any money on that. I'll tell you what to look out for, guys. I'll give you a little educated viewpoint from the MMA background that I have, you guys. But that's what's going on here at Palm Tree Sports Radio. Thank you for joining me here. My name is Corey Pujols, your host, as always. And it is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hello, ladies and sinners. Hello, sports fans around the world. Hello, IE Sports family. This is Cal Henderson, the host of IE Vegas, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio. If you folks are interested in sports in the Vegas area, if you're wanting to have a blast for one hour, every Tuesday night from 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, this is a show built for the Vegas sports fans, where we feature the Las Vegas Raiders, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Las Vegas Aces, and the University of Las Vegas, Nevada, Rebels. Hopefully, fingers crossed, MLB team coming soon. Either way, if you folks are looking to have a blast for one hour each and every week, tune, tune in Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you folks are interested in Vegas sports news, go to our Twitter at SinCities underscore IESR, and you can speak with me, the host, Kale Henderson, at Kale underscore Henderson on Twitter. At any time, be happy to reply always want to reach out to our fans again the sin city sports show presented by ie sports radio your direct feed for all that is sports up it's your man bishop the voice of this is kc sports the show where we go over the chiefs the royals kc current sporting kc mu and oh yeah if we got time we'll even throw in some of that ku stuff for my people on the 913 side come hang out with us every sunday 2 p.m central standard time on ie sports radio your direct feed for all that is sports and welcome back, guys, to Palm Tree Sports Radio. My name is Corey Pools, your host. And as always, this is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. A couple of quick things. Yes, uh, Ralph, my man, the score could definitely be reversed for that Bucks lions game, but I would agree with you in saying that the Lions are riding some crazy momentum. I mean, okay, so here's the deal. For those of you... Now, listen, guys, I'm 29 years old. I, go, I turn 30 in May, okay? Uh, a lot of people... I look like a baby. 
Like, I physically, I'm aging very slow. Shout out to my mom and dad for the wonderful genes. And so a lot of people kind of take for granted my knowledge of football before the year 1994, the year I was born. And uh, let me just say this. One thing that has remained the same my entire life is that the Lions have not won a playoff game. Now, like I said, I'm about to be 30, guys. Imagine living 30 years and not witnessing a team win a playoff game. Just one team specifically. It's not like it's like all these other teams, like all the Patriots and, you know, the Falcons and all these other teams that, like, didn't do much in the playoffs until they finally got a good head coach or a good team put together. The Lions simply have not won a playoff game, nor have they made the playoff very many times in my existence. So I would agree with you 110% when you say they're riding some crazy moment. Again, their first victory, having the defense playing on the level that it's playing right now. Jared Goff coming over from the uh, from the, the Rams, who people thought were dead, and then him getting payback on the Rams in the playoffs. I mean, jeez, man. that You're right. What a story. You know who else has a good story going on? The Texans. And all good things must come to an end. The reason why I say that is because, yes, the Lions are definitely riding a wave of momentum, a huge wave of momentum. But it's subject to change, just as it would be for any other team. And I think that Tampa Bay has been a team in in history that has stood its ground on two separate occasions. I think if you were to go to somebody 25 years ago and you say, who do you think is going to have two Super Bowl victories in the NFC South in 25 years? I personally guarantee you, Eight to nine out of ten people are not picking Tampa Bay when you look at how storied a couple of those other franchises are. The Saints, who used to duke it out against the 49ers on a regular basis, a team with a lot of Super Bowls. You get what I'm saying there? And then obviously Atlanta would have been my second pick with the heritage that they have had drafting players. Unfortunately, they do a worse job keeping players than our Rays do. And, uh, well, we're not going to talk about the Rays and letting great players go in baseball. (laughs) Or just we're gonna leave that alone. So I think that Tampa Bay is in prime position to knock this momentum train off of its rails, and I cannot wait to see it happen. But I do agree with you. If there's any such thing as momentum in the world of sports, the Lions are riding it. If the Bucks and the Packers win, the NFC championship is here in Tampa Bay. <laughs> and we all remember what happened last time the NFC championship was here played in Tampa Bay, right? And uh, what's up, Corey? Hey, Larry, how you doing, brother? Good to see you, my man. I'm glad you were able to make it. You know, uh, not not much, just holding it down here at Palm Tree, you know, and, and giving the people what they need. Speaking of giving the people what they need, I've got some information for you guys for the NBA. So right now, the NBA right is in its full um, regular season swing of things right now, to say the least. And the Heat and the Magic, they've been playing like identical basketball all year long. <clears throat> Excuse me. The last game that they played, they had the exact same record. They don't have the exact same record right now, but that that's okay, right? Because you you expect that. I mean, things won't and cannot stay the same. Well, look at this run. Excuse my ADHD, guys. This is a a heck of a game we're watching here. Single Terry breaks it for a first down against the Rams. But as I was saying, the last time these two teams met, they were looked ident- identically the same. There's two games separating them right now, and that's okay. The team with a little bit more longevity is the team with the better record, as you would expect, with the Miami Heat. Not to be outdone by the Magic, who will be playing each other tomorrow at 6 p.m., so get ready for that ball game. A little in-Florida clash, if you will. Another one, I should say. And um, But the Heat, right? So the Heat are rocking a 24-18 and 18 record right now. They lost to the Hawks the other e- the, uh, last night, I should say. Uh, the, the Hawks now, they're rocking an 18-23 and 23 record, so there's about five games separating these two teams. But, excuse me, it's... Uh, it's it's part of the game, right? Like, you're not going to win every single game. We see a lot of teams at the top struggle uh, against teams that they should win against a lot of the time. If you guys remember last year, Boston was the number one seed in the East. They lost to the Magic twice in a row. People were like, what? You beat the 76ers and the Bucks, but you can't beat the Magic? I mean, what? you get what I'm saying. It's That's just the nature of basketball, and this is an example of it right here. Now, the Hawks won that game by one score. It was 109-108, you know, ice tray being the youngest player to get to, I believe it was 10,000 assists and 10,000 points or something like that. I I, I think that was the stat that they gave us the other evening. So congratulations to Ice Trey. That's a guy that I think that should be playing for the Lakers. But uh, I digress. I digress. Um, The Heat's next game, as I mentioned, is going to be against the Magic tomorrow. So a little in-house action is going to be going on there. That game is going to take uh, place at 6 p.m. It doesn't matter who's going where because it's a a three-hour, three-and-a-half-hour separation. Who cares? Weather's going to be great. Gonna be a lot of fans, guys. I mean, I don't know about you guys. If you've never been to Florida, let me tell you. All right, today I woke up. It was 40 degrees outside. I just went outside before I started my show. 
I swear to God, it was like 58, all right? Almost perfect, all right? So, you know, our, our weather is something that we really enjoy down here. And then when you add basketball to the mix of things, you'll be going in there. You don't even need a jacket. All right, so that's going to be pretty cool. But can't wait to see how that game turns out again. Uh, Magic, younger team, younger coach, younger team. Heat, a lot more continuity on both sides of the ball as far as offensive and defensive starters for for Miami, what they're going to do. Bam Adebayo looking to have another big game. He's been surging the last few weeks. Hopefully he can put it together. Eric Spolster inking another deal to stay with Miami and most likely retire with Miami after it's all said and done. You know he's getting up there in years, guys. Y'all can see the gray hairs poking out of him, you know, but Eric Spolster definitely one of the best coaches in the game, arguably one of the best coaches to ever do it, can't wait to watch that game, the Heat are 2-2 two two in the last four, they lost their last two, is it cause for concern, I don't think so, that's the Heat for you, especially at this time in the season, I mean, they'll they'll break some, some speed off, you know, uh, as far as winning some games, they'll, they'll do that soon enough, I mean, you could feel it coming, right, what, what did, um, Oh, man, what did Phil Collins say? I could feel it coming in the air tonight, right? That you get the idea. So give give the Heat some time, guys. They'll catch fire again in a moment, and once they do, I'll be sitting here telling you, "Oh, the Heat are on fire again." Dot 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 dot. You you get the idea. So that's what's going on there for the Heat. Like I said, two and two in the last four. Quietly lost the last two. Now's a great time to go get a win, an in-state win, and then build upon that as we look to continue this surge into the middle of the season. Now, the Magic, on the other hand, they're neg two games, okay? So they're 22-20 and 20 rolling into this game. They just lost to the 76ers. We're rocking a 27-13 and 13 record quietly, one of the best teams in the East right now. Behind Joel Embiid and other in, uh, in friends, uh, that score, the score of that game was a, a lot more um, one-sided would be the terminology to use here. 124-109 to 109 was the score of that ball game. And, well, you know, Magic, you just want to put that one behind you and move on. You know what I say, guys. If you want to be successful in the NBA, you have to keep the team from scoring 100 points, and you yourself have to score over 100. Same thing in the case of the NFL. Just the point is 20 points in the NFL, right? For the record, a stat I didn't give you guys on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are 9-1 and one this year when scoring more than 20 points and holding the other team to under 20 points. Don't say I told you so, but, you know, I, I, I told you so. Anyhow, the Magic, again, next game going to be against the Heat. Again, tomorrow, 6 p.m., just in case you want to see a little in-house ruse. Unfortunately, I will not be watching that. I will be watching the dun na na NFL playoffs, guys. Two big games coming our way tomorrow. It's going to culminate with the Chiefs game, but the Buccaneers game is the early one against the Lions at 3 p.m., so I'm going to be watching that game. Hopefully, I won't be turning it off early, but, you know, we, we've seen crazier things happen, you know. So that's what's going on there for the Magic. The Magic 3 have lost three out of their last four. They're going to have to find a way to catch that momentum and, and get back to playing sound basketball. Originally, they were winning with their youth and defense, you know, being able to outpace other teams and then just getting getting turnovers and playing well in transition, which, you know, is what a lot of great teams are doing right now. The Magic are going to have to find that, uh, that, that Magic again, for all intents and purposes, pun intended. Uh, if they can do that, they'll find success, you know, against the Heat and pretty much every other team as they have, have been able to do spotty, but been able to do it the last couple years. So, you know, and this year definitely taking off a lot better than it did last year, but definitely want to get back in that win column. They're getting too close to 500 for, com for comfort, and I don't like the Magic when they're hovering around 500. I just, that's not a good look for them, nor is it healthy for them. Got to get back on track, and they can do it behind, again, reestablishing their defense and transition play and playing with that youth, playing with that speed, with that tempo that has been able to separate them in uh, earlier games this season. So that's what's going on there in the NBA, guys, just in case you want to look at some uh, NBA basketball coming out of the South here. That's, that, that's going to be the big game tomorrow, 6 p.m. And uh, But moving on, let's talk about our bolts, right? So, NHL, bolts. You know, I'm always going to ride this wave because, you know, like I said, you're in the South, y'all don't play ice hockey. It's too hot. It's a tropical paradise. It is a tropical paradise. I love it. And we still play hockey. That's right. Nothing changes. We still play hockey. Go see our last few years for reference. Okay? Bolts. Looks like they are finding their rhythm again, huh? Which is always scary because when this team gets hot, man, whoo! It, they're a scary team, bro. I, I personally love my Bolts. been watching my Bolts for a long time, guys. And, and that's just an example of what I can see. You know, uh, uh, Stamkos and the boys just, just playing lights out over the last six games, guys. I, I'll say last five games. Six games, also close one to the Bruins. Bruins, quietly best team in the NHL, quite possibly. I mean, it's, it's opinion is subjective. But in my opinion, the Bruins have been playing phenomenal hockey, as they tend to always do. And it, if, if 
The Bolts continue to play like this. They're going to find themselves right back where we were last year in the playoffs with an opportunity for another crown. Uh, would be an unpresented three out of four to see this team make the type, that type of imagin imaginative leap to, of success. However, you know, we'll see what happens because, you know, hockey is different from other sports. You got to be disciplined and you got to be able to put wins together on the road. That's something that we see more in basketball than we do in other sports, but Hockey's no exception. They were able to win their game against the Sabres yesterday. 3-1 to one ball game. Great offense, offensive output. Uh, great teamwork. You know, scoring on the power play. Things like that are just always going to be important. And when we do that, we're always successful. I mean, you hear me say that pretty often when it comes to this Bolt team. And it really hasn't changed yet. Uh, that game... Now, the Sabres... Okay, I get it. They're not the best team in hockey. Yeah, I agree with you. The the Bolts rocking a 24-17-5 record. The Sabres rocking a 20-22-4 record, but that doesn't matter. It, it's wins that matter. W's. And we added one. Speaking of adding one, we have won five in a row. I don't know if you guys have a fire alarm, but you might want to sound it. Because this team is heating up. Okay, and I mean in a major way. Five in a row, balls catching fire. Uh, it's behind a lot of offense. Great defense, of course, but that's something you learn to expect when it comes to the bolts. I mean, when we're playing great defense, we're damn near unstoppable. Okay, but offense has really been lighting it up, really putting some scores on the board, really chaining uh, 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 goals, which is very important. Of course, momentum is huge in hockey. And whenever, whenever you're able to chain goals, you're able to, that that just really helps to set you up, especially in the the second half of the game. And that's one of the things that I've always believed in is starting fast when it comes to hockey, because getting a beat on your opponent, man, listen, uh, a great general knows his opponent, you know, says in the art of war, uh, written, what, 200 plus years ago, guys. So that's something for us to take in consideration. Um, to be successful is to be successful against your opponent, and that means to have the knowledge of your opponent. And uh, that's what we've been doing. Next game is going to be against the Red Wings, guys, tomorrow, 7 p.m. If you want to check that game out, Red Wings quietly playing some really good hockey themselves, 23-17-5 record, almost identical record to the Bolts. So this will be a game that is most likely going to be decided on who has the bigger brain, better reflexes, and who can score better. Right, because obviously both these teams are playing very well offensively, and as long as they continue to do that, we might end up with a shootout. Now, I don't want to see no baseball scores. I don't want to see a seven to five puck game. Okay, that's not what I'm here for. I'd like to see a low scoring game, like three zip bolts kind of game. You know, four zip something like that. All right, okay, I get it. I'm being a little selfish, but you get what I'm saying, guys. That's that's where we live at. That's where the bolts want to be. They want to be in that mid range. They want to be able to control possession. They want to be able to control the scoring. Okay. And obviously, uh, limit power plays on the other team. Because when we do that, again, we're very successful. Panthers. Florida Panthers. Rocking a 27-14-4 record. Who cares, Panthers? You have three more wins than we do. We're not impressed. Like, you... <sighs> good job, Panthers. You guys are playing really good hockey. You guys actually... Uh... I think you guys have one win above us here in the regular season. So far, this... I have to go back and look at the games. But I think I saw that correct. Unfortunately, they were able to lose... <laughs> I mean, I know that wasn't part of their decision, but they were to lose to the Wild there. Uh, that was a 64 puck game, very high scoring game, if you will. And of course, that's the Panthers' weakness when they get into shootouts. Obviously, they they lose the other end of that shootouts. They play hockey similar to the way the the Bolts play hockey, and as long as they do that, Lamar, you are disgusting. Jesus Christ. Excuse me, guys. I apologize if you're watching the game. You just saw what he did to that team. Good job, Lamar. Um, but anyhow, as I was saying, the Panthers play hockey similar to the way the Bolts do when they're successful. Defensively, they're successful all the way around. When they get in the shootouts, that's when things get questionable. And that's exactly what happened there to the Wild yesterday. Now, the Wild are rocking a 19-21-6 record. Their record's terrible. They're not even 500, okay? not Nowhere near it, all right? So, uh, I think that this is an example of the Panthers taking a day off. You know, so odds are they're going to be back to where they, I don't say a day off, a few, like a week off maybe to be more accurate, but you get what I'm saying. This two shall pass. They're not going to, they're not going to stay playing hockey this way for too much longer. Look for them to really straighten things out in the meantime, between time. Uh, the next game that they have though is going to be against the Predators. That team has a decent record, 25, 20 and one record. So that game's going to be played Monday, January 22nd at 8 p.m. Just in case you want to watch some Panthers hockey. So we got the Bolts playing tomorrow at 7 p.m. And then Monday on the 22nd, we have the Panthers playing some hockey, guys. Just like I said, just in case you guys were wanting to watch some Florida hockey, see how we get jiggy with it in the South and what these teams are able to do on the ice. Two teams that a lot of people, you know, on paper may not look at and say, oh, this team is going to drive some guys, some other teams. Wow. Well, guess what? We're, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it well. Okay. Uh, they've lost three in a row, but like I said, it's like they took a week off. 
give them a moment. They'll be back. You know, there, there's no doubt in my mind that the Panthers will return to form. I just hope they don't do it against our our Bolts. All right? Go Bolts. Always go Bolts. Go Big Blue, baby. Uh, let's go ahead and take our final break of the evening, guys. When we get back, we're going to go ahead and cover what's going on in college basketball, and then I'll talk to you guys about Drake's Duplessis and Strickland tonight for UFC 297. Thank you for having me locked here at Palm Tree Sports Radio. My name is Corey Pujols, your host. And as always, it's brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's going on, football fans? This is me, your boy Larry B, inviting you to join myself, Callum Reynolds, Mike Pat, and John Felipe for one of the most electrifying football shows you have ever heard. Three and out, right here at IE Sports Radio. Recap of the week before, a preview of what's to come, and of course, three hardcore head to head prom time face offs. Each week, you don't want to miss it. What's happening, sports fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS. The SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. The show for the other side of the United States, the other Bay, if you if you please. Here, obviously, you know we have Tampa Bay, and over there they have San Francisco Bay, and uh, and I get it. That's it's a little bit further, you know, north, but you get what I'm saying. Battle of the Bay. Same thing with Green Bay. Green Bay has a bay as as well. There's a there's a lot of bays. There's, there's a lot of bays here. Uh, Interesting concept there, guys. Anyway, welcome back to Palm Tree Sports. My name is Corey Pools, your host, and as always, is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio. Jen B says, a foot of snow is so pretty. I concur 100%. First time I saw snow is uh, when I was in the Army, guys. I was in Fort Jackson, relaxing Jackson, which ain't so relaxing. I was there from November 19th to February 21st. Got to see snow for the first time. Lost my mind. I was still in my um. Well, in the army, you don't have PJs. You have uh, you have PT gear, long sleeve and short sleeve. We were in our short sleeve PT gear because sleeping in long sleeve PT gear was not allowed. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are in the military, you know what I'm talking about. And um, woke up, went outside. It was snowing. Lost my mind. I was playing in the snow, making snow angels, doing all kind of stuff. And then the drill sergeants came, and we got in. A little bit of trouble. But then they let us do it anyway. So, hey, cool. You know, anyhow, a foot of snow, so pretty. Agreed. Just uh, rather have the NFC Championship game here in the South. Still, I'm a fan of the good weather. You know, I think that's what it comes down to, guys. <laughs> anyhow, let's go ahead and get cracking with the rest of the show here that I have for you guys right now as the Ravens get ready to take it into the fourth quarter. They're playing pretty good football right now. So, good job, Ravens. Keep it going. Texans. <clears throat> You got 15 to figure it out, guys. You got 15 to figure it out. 
College basketball, guys. College basketball. So we got Gators, Knowles, and Canes, all right? These guys are all a game away from each other, literally within a game of each other. I think that it's uh, a very interesting uh, sediment that we're dealing with here in Florida that all the teams are playing basketball on the exact same level. Obviously, Miami came into this season ranked. They are not ranked anymore. Uh, the Gators rocking 11-6 and six record. Knowles 11-6. and six. Canes 12-6, and six, all right? Like I said, a game separating these two teams. Really, it's half a game, but you get what I'm saying here. The Gators, are they're going to visit the zoo tonight at 8 p.m., guys. The zoo, for those of you who are, are not familiar with it, zoo is part of the terminology for Missouri. Yes, we call Missouri the zoo here in the South. Get used to it. It's We've been doing it for like a long time. I can't even tell you when it started. Pretty much all my life we've been saying it like that. So that's going to be an interesting game there. Uh, Gators should win that game pretty handily. Zoo's going to rock a 8-9 and nine record, so they're not exactly playing great basketball. But they're not, they're not a basketball school anyway. That game is going to take place tonight at 8 p.m. Unfortunately, there are going to be two other things to be looking at that will kind of cloud the visual for that, but I will be following it on my ESPN app, and uh, we'll talk more about that after the game. Like I said, uh, Gators should be able to win this game pretty handily. Next game is going to be a little bit harder against Mississippi State. That game is going to take place Wednesday, January 24th, 8.30 p.m. So late start times here for for these games right now, just probably due to the nature of, of, of school getting back into the swing of things, you know, fresh out of uh, the holiday season. And like I said, everybody getting back into the swing of things, more primetime basketball, especially now that we're getting closer to March. The Gators look like they might be able to make that March Madness bit. And uh, if they do, you know, go Gators. If they don't, no big, right? You know, we're in a rebuild. There's no confusion about that. Uh, in that rebuild, we're one and three in the last four. SEC competition is about what you expect. Get some good SEC teams. We just lost to the uh, Tennessee Volunteers. We lost to Ole Miss, and then we lost to um, Kentucky in a very close one. I think that was what really set it off. If we were going to beat Kentucky, perhaps we could have found some magic here in the SEC, but we weren't able to, so we're struggling a little bit. But again, SEC playing some good basketball right now. Got some ranked teams doing a lot of good things right now uh, coming out of Southeastern Conference, guys. So hopefully the Gators can get that together. In the meantime, between time the ACC, the Knowles are clashing with, or they clashed, I should say, with Clemson. That game was late in the second. It should be over. Anybody has a score, put it into the chat for me so I can see it. I do not have that game on at the moment. But they were losing to Clemson, uh, 65-55, late in the second. Guys, uh, Knowles, Clemson separated by game. All right, Knowles are 11-6, Clemson 12-5, both ACC teams. Typical rivalry basketball here in, in the South, you know, um, Clemson. They're 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 playing all right, you know. They're playing all right. They still they have a chance as good as any to get into that big dance as well. And if they continue to play this way, they'll do so. Um, like I said, if anybody has that, put that in the chat. I'll I'll say it here over here live, and um, you know we'll go from there. Next game for them is going to be against Syracuse. Those playing slightly better basketball, rocking a thirteen to five record. That game is going to be Tuesday, January twenty third, seven p.m. So get ready for that one. Again, ACC clashing right now as we get closer to March March Madness coming up right around the corner. A month away, guys. I can't wait for it. And, uh, and, you know, obviously, like I said, then we'll have a lot more to talk about, especially when it comes into filling these brackets to see who's going to take it home once we get into that, uh, you know, the Sweet 16, the Elite 8, and then the Final Four, guys. Uh, the Knowles winners of five in a row. It seems like they were on fire. If they were able to win this game, that would match their longest win streak, I believe it is, in the last few years that they've played college basketball. So good job, Knowles. Keep up what you're doing. As long as you guys lose to the Gators every year, I'm good. You know, I, I'm, I'm good with that. Touch down. Ravens, Mr. Likely, likely to score a touchdown. You, you see what I did there, guys? Good job, Ravens, as they get ready to pull away here. 23-10 early in the fourth quarter, 14 minutes, 23 seconds to go. Good job, Ravens. Good job, Lamar Jackson. MVP, MVP. All right, all right, I know. I'm not, I'm, this isn't a Ravens show. I'm just showing love, okay? I, I, I get it. Gen B, thank you, thank you, thank you. 78-67 Clemson ball game. About what you expect, you know what I'm saying? Clemson, just a few more pieces than Florida State. You know, uh, doing what you expect them to do over there in the ACC uh, when it comes to basketball. And that's, you know, dominate for the most part in their conference. So good job, Clemson. Uh, Knowles, you got to figure it out, guys. You got to, you, you know, you won five in a row. You're supposed to make it six. You didn't. Back to the drawing board you go. All right. You know, nothing wrong with that. And also, Jen B, uh, you got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, guys, that's what's going on there with the Knowles. Canes, on the other hand, again, they've got the slightly better record for to who it may concern. I mean, I me not uh they lost to clemson 72 69 there a three-point ball game uh clem or uh my bad canes one game behind syracuse also rocking a 13 and 5 record so uh 
Yeah, I guess that was the way that game was supposed to end. I I guess. I mean, they could have won, just didn't have ball discipline towards the end of the game. Um, it's college basketball, you know. So I I guess you could say it's what you expect, and this is not like the NBA where we're expecting them to get it right from because when you're in college. You got a life you're living. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's more than just the sport that you're playing. Although the sport should be your centerpiece to it all. And what you, you know, you rotate your uh, your schedule around. Like, I'll put it to you like this. Uh, football players, basketball players, tennis players, hockey, um, baseball and softball, track and field. They all have designated time frames for training. So, you kind of fit your schedule around that in college from what I've seen with a lot of the kids. And you have to maintain these good scores. Maintaining the good scores is a little bit easier than it seems. But all you have to do is really dedicate yourself. And that's what we see a lot of players do. And unfortunately, when you're dedicating yourself to two things at once, it's going to be a lot harder to be as disciplined in one than the other at any given time. Though we see it happen from time to time. It's not a common thing. So... You know, it, like I said, it's about what you expect. Right now, Syracuse playing slightly better basketball than the Canes, and, you know, the Canes playing slightly better basketball than, than, than Clemson, and Clemson playing slightly better basketball than the Knowles. So, you know, hey, it's the ACC. It's what you expect. Uh, they're 2-2 two and two in their last four. They've got to, you know, figure it out, catch fire again, get back to playing uh, basketball the way they were playing earlier this year. Um, I won't say that they're in a free fall, Dad. I would say... They're a team that likes to take it down to the wire, it seems. And when you let things go down to the wire, just like we've seen in the movie Any Given Sunday in reference to football or in, uh, what's the basketball movie? Um, Jesus Christ, there's a basketball one. You, you get what I'm saying, though. I think that momentum is huge, especially in college sports, even more so than pro sports. In, in college sports, momentum is even bigger. We've seen momentum be a killer and a, a, a successful um, engine for victory right and i think that miami just being in their nature that they've allowed games to get you know so close to the wire at the end of the game that sometimes things go their way and sometimes they don't uh you know that's what we call cinderella you know in in college sports especially when you have that cinderella s team that team's doing things that they shouldn't necessarily be doing uh there's a lot of times where teams have a have a uh they're brought back down to earth in reference to your free fall. And I think that Miami has been brought back down to earth, especially since the beginning of the season. I believe they start the season like eight and one. And then since then they're now, you know, 12 and six. So it goes to show you that it's not easy to just put wins together um, no matter what sport you're playing. But I think that it's also a perpetual loop of momentum going up and down in their favor, out of their favor, in their favor, out of their favor. If they want to hold on to momentum, they're going to have to be more disciplined towards the end of the game and learn how to finish. If they can do that, they'll find themselves on the la- on the winning side of more games than not. And they'll find themselves ranked again unfortunately they're not playing basketball that way and that's really what it comes down to the next game they're going to have a chance to get the momentum back on their side against notre dame who's not playing great basketball at all they're rocking a 7 and 11 record so it's not like i fully expect them to do much of anything against the canes but hey we've seen crazier things unfold in sports so let's not sleep on notre dame there wednesday january 24 7 p.m be the start time of that ball game just in case you want to check out some canes basketball guys like i said they're not in a free fall, but they have no control over their momentum right now. And whenever that's the case in college, anything goes, you know. So that's basically where the Canes are at playing basketball. That's what's going on there in college basketball in the state of Florida. Like I said, all of these teams separated by half of a game, which is not what we thought it was going to be at the start of the season. Let me tell you that much. And shout out to the Knowles for catching fire before their loss to Clemson. But still, five in a row, big deal, especially when you're playing inside the ACC basketball rankings, which allows a little bit more breathing room, okay, than uh, some of these other conferences out here, okay? So that's what's going on there in college basketball, guys. And then I told you I'd give you guys a little heads up on what's going on tonight for UFC 297. The main fight that we want to pay attention to here is brought to my attention by not just the MMA community, but um, also family members of mine who are going to be watching this game, perhaps betting on this game. Just a heads up, guys. This fight, I said game, this fight... Um, between Sean Strickland and uh, Jacobs Duplessis is by no means an easy fight, okay? This is going to be a really hard fight to figure out. Both of these fires are weird, okay? I use the term weird from a physical output perspective, not from, like, personality-wise. I mean, personality-wise, Sean Strickland is just a damaged person trying to become a better person and uh, following his path to do it. He's been able to do that, especially as he's gotten more wise over the years after his loss to Alex Pineda. Uh, he's done a very, very good job in bouncing back 
And one of the things that he did was was train with Alex Pineda, which was a huge deal for him. Training with him is the reason why he beat Israel Adesanya, in my humble opinion, because obviously Alex knows one of Izzy's weaknesses, okay? And if you haven't discovered what that weakness is by now, I'm not going to tell you because I'm an Israel Adesanya fan, but it rhymes with not hitting him in the face, okay? Notice I said not hitting him in the face. That's right. If you're not hitting him in the face, where are you hitting him at? The body, guys. The body. If you can open the body, the body opens up the guard. The guard being open means headshots can land more cleanly. And when head headshots are landing more cleanly, well, watch the fight between Sean Strickland and Israel Adesanya. <laughs> you see what happens. Sean wins on the feet, used pure boxing, didn't really care too much about kickboxing. That was able to neutralize Izzy. Guarantee the same thing won't happen twice. However... Jacobs Duplessis is not just a kickboxer. This man actually likes to go to the ground. One reason why he likes to go to the ground, well, he's huge, okay? So here's one of the things that I'm not a big fan of when it comes to martial arts, is weight bullying. If you walk around at 215, 220, then fight at 215, 220, or at least light heavyweight. What are you dropping down to 185 for? Explain that to me. Somebody please explain to me, if you weigh over 200 pounds, why you're fighting at 185. 80. Well, I'm going to give you an example as to a reason why. You might think that those fights come easier. You might like beating up on smaller people. I mean, hey, whatever. It's your preference. Doesn't make it respectable at all, okay? I'm a big fan of guys who fight at the weight that they walk around at. Um, you know, Dustin Poirier walks around at about 170, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he fights at 155. That I can deal with. Now, if he's bigger than that, I, for, I forgive me, guys. I, I for, to my knowledge, I've seen him walk around at about one set, about welterweight, okay? Dropping down to, to lightweight, 15-pound drop, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Alex Pineda walks around at like 220. He's dropping down to 185. That's a 35-pound drop, okay? It's ridiculous. Drake is, is about the same size as Alex, okay? He's huge. He's, he's massive for the weight class. And, you know, like I said, I'm not a big fan of weight bullying, and I think that's what it is. Sean Strickland walks a lot closer around to that that. Uh, 200 marks, so he, he's got about a 15 pound weight drop. Again, respectable. I, I can work with that. You know what I'm saying? That's not that's not overkill. So this fight's going to be very interesting. I think Sean is going to try to work his boxing the same way he did. His boxing looks the best that it ever has. His striking has looked the best that it ever has. Uh, especially against at Israel Adesanya. So that's going to be something for us to look out to. Uh, I don't know who's going to win this fight. If Drakus fights Excuse me, like the way he did against Robert Whitaker, it's going to be hard to beat that Drake is because he's very awkward. His movement's very awkward. The way he sets up his strikes is very awkward, but he's also not afraid to go to the ground. That's something that will not work well against Sean Strickland. Sean usually likes to stay standing up, and I think that standing up is probably where he would win the fight. But, again, he's going to have to box the way he boxed against Izzy, if that's going to be the case. He's going to be able to check leg kicks. He's got to make sure that he doesn't get into a trading war. And he's got to make sure that he's the more Chris Stryker. I think he can do it, but, again, we'll have to just wait and see. Because I think that this fight is a very awkward fight for both these for both of these fighters. I mean, like I said, it could go either way. Uh, if I had to pick... If I had to pick based off of styles alone... If Drake is Duplessis takes this fight to the ground, he wins. If he keeps it on the ground, he wins. If Sean Strickland keeps this fight standing up, Sean Strickland wins. Wouldn't be surprised to see him knock out Drake is. Drake is does have a big head, and with the accuracy that Sean was fighting with against Adesanya, who's one of the best strikers in the world, one of the best strikers to ever live, I'd have to say that it gives him such an overwhelming uh, momentum and advantage via momentum to win this fight, guys. So I would say Strong Son Strickland takes it even possibly by TKO if the fight stays standing up. But if this fight spends more than half of itself on the ground, Drake is Duplessis takes the win by decision, if not submission, due to the fact that, again, I believe that would be Sean's weakness is the lack of verse in his ground game. Uh, I myself have a slight ground game, and let me tell you something. When it comes to BJJ, everybody's the same size on the ground. Okay, if you got anybody's ever done BJJ, you should know that anybody's wrestled, you should know that that on the ground, taking away that lower half and that base is going to make it a lot harder for anybody to uh, to to stack up. You know, realistically speaking, guys. So that's going to be the fight to look out for the main event tonight. There's also a couple other good fighters fighting. Neil Magny and a few others are going to be fighting, but let's not act like we're not here for the main event, guys. UFC 297 tonight. Um, I'm going to rock with Sean. I want Sean to win. I'm not a fan of Drake's Duplessis. I, I'm just. I don't like the guy's narrative. I, I think he's uh, made a lot of enemies with the way that he's carried himself. Sean Strickland, he's his self. And I don't always agree with his self, 
but I agree with being yourself. And that's something I think we should all strive to be. And especially with him doing it at such a successful level. Congratulations to Sean again on his victory over Israel Adesanya. I have to say I definitely respect uh, what he was able to do there. And, and I take no credit away from the man. He did a phenomenal job. And hopefully he does another phenomenal job with the first fight of the new year here in 2024, guys. Can't wait to see it. I'm going to be watching it myself. I hope you guys will be too. Guys, that's it. That's all I have for you on this edition of Palm Tree Sports Radio. We were able to make it right on time. Perfect ending here right about 7 o'clock, especially with this game about to end soon and the next game getting ready to start. Can't wait to see what happens there, guys. Again, I, I look forward to seeing you guys same place, same time next week. Again, thank you so, 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 so much for joining me here on Palm Tree Sports. My name has been Corey Pujols, your host. And as always, this is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports, guys. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Enjoy your Sunday. As always, spend time with your family, with your loved ones. If you haven't, call them. Tell them you love them. Tell them you're thinking about them. Enjoy some sports. Have a drink. You know, playoff sports is always a lot of fun. I know I'm going to have me a little sippy sip, if you will, and uh, get ready for this game against the Lions tomorrow, which I will for sure be, uh, my heart will be racing. It will be beating out of its chest for this game because winner goes to the NFC Championship game, guys, and I, I tell you what, didn't think we were going to be here. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you, Jen B., uh, Ralph, Dad, always, I love you so much, Dad. Be safe getting home from work. Uh, you know, you're the man, and uh, without you, I wouldn't be the man I am today. So thank you so, so, so much. Uh, you know, I'll talk to you and Mom later this evening as we get ready for this fight. Everybody else, stay sound. Have a wonderful and blessed week, and I will see you same time, same place, right here on Palm Tree Sports Radio, 6 p.m. Saturday afternoon. Until then, guys, peace.